Welcome to Wasatch Weekends for this Friday, September 22nd edition. I'm your host, Ben Roof. On today's show, we've got Katie Wang from Park City Film helping kick off the countdown to the Sundance Film Festival. And of course, we've also got Steve Perillo, a travel expert, stopping by to give us some tips and tricks on how to take some fall vacations. But a quick local announcement. Speaking of the Sundance Film Festival, the countdown is on for the 40th annual Sundance Film Festival. And that's going to be this January from the 18th to the 28th in person. And it's going to be available online from the 25th through the 28th of this coming January. Tickets are going on sale October 18th. So make sure that you get ready to see some fantastic films. There's going to be 90 feature length films and 60 shorts shown throughout the Park City area. And those are going to be at the Library Center Theater, the Egyptian Theater, the Ray, the Eccles, the Prospector Square Theater, the Holiday Village Cinemas, and of course, Redstone Cinemas. Again, tickets go on sale October 18th, so make sure to keep an eye out for those if you want to catch some amazing independent films. Now let's take a quick look at today's weather. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to Wasatch Weekends. We are once again joined by Katie Wang from Park City Film to tell us about what you guys have going on this weekend. Welcome to the show, Katie. Thanks for having me. Always great to be here. Always great to have you. So tell me a little bit about what you guys got going on. I did start the show off by announcing that ticket packages are going on sale for Sundance coming up on the 18th here in October. Yes, super excited about that. Always fun to have Sundance, and they're going to be starting a little bit earlier this year on the first Thursday. So normally they start at night, but they're starting with afternoon screenings. So pay attention to that. If you're traveling into town, you'll want to come in a little earlier than usual. But yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it, and we do all the concessions for our venue. So if you're looking for a fun volunteer opportunity, um, please check out our website at parkcityfilm.org. In about a month, we'll have all our, our schedule up online. Uh, but this weekend, we have actually a number of films going on. We're kind of busy here as we're wrapping up our fall season. Um, our main screening is The Miracle Club, and that'll be in the Jim Santee Auditorium here on Park Ave. And this is a great film featuring Maggie Smith and Laura Linney and Kathy Bates. And it's really the story of three generations of women um, in Ireland who have decided that they want to travel to Lourdes in France, um, you know, home of miracles, to kind of change their lives. They've got a lot of things that they're going, de dealing with, um, you know, kind of unexplored grief, um, just changes in life that they've been grappling with, and they kind of feel like coming together, that they're looking for that miracle that may kind of set things back on the proper track. And so it's this great film um, that's just about friendship, and about forgiveness, you know, obviously a little bit about grief and kind of managing that, but just, I mean, it's so delightful to see such great actors coming together um, in this one storyline and just kind of what they can bring to the story and to the screen together. Sounds like it's gonna be a really wonderful family bonding film, kind of a way to kind of get out with the family and just kind of see that cathartic bonding experience a little bit and share some of it. What else you guys Absolutely. have coming on? Yeah, and just always, and there's a lot of levity in it. I mean, certainly whenever you have Maggie Smith, you know that she is going to just <laughs> delight you. She's always quite witty. That dry British wit uh, comes straight through, even though she's Irish in this movie. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like, you know, there are some kind of serious themes to the film, but it is more of a lighthearted kind of story in terms of how these friends, you know, have just been together for so long and how they, you know, kind of deal with this second half of their lives together. So great Light film, and, and that'll be showing right. Friday and Saturday at seven, and then again Sunday at six. Sorry, cut you off there. Oh no, no, no worries. I, like, just sounds like light and fun. Nothing too terribly serious or heavy. 
So what else do you guys have going on? You've got that one, and then I'm sure it's not all. Yes, no, and so we're actually um, doing another pop-up screening this weekend. We're over at Pendry Plaza, which is in Canyons Village. So if you haven't been to that little area where they've got Dos Olas and Kita and Pendry, Apre Pendry, the restaurants over there, it's a great little um, kind of enclave where you can get some great food, but now you're gonna also see some great movies this weekend, thanks to Pendry Plaza. So we'll have Princess Bride on Friday night at seven. On Saturday night at eight o'clock, we're showing a documentary called Nothing's for Free, and it's about the history of free ride mountain biking, which is awesome and super intense. Um, really fun, fun story to, to share together. And then Sunday night, we round everything out with Marcel the Shell with shoes on, which is my favorite mockumentary of all time because Marcel the Shell, little shell with googly eyes and shoes, amazing. Um, but one of the best films, I think, of the year and certainly one that captured the hearts of our audience members when we showed it last fall when it first came out. Um, but it's all free. If you come early, you can get some s'mores packages so you can roast your marshmallows on the open fire pits out there. You're welcome to bring your own blankets and chairs and food. But if you'd also like to avail yourselves of one of the three restaurants there, you can do that as well. Kind of if you've been to San Francisco, been to Foreign Cinema, it's a great restaurant there. It's that same kind of concept of you can enjoy your meal while watching a great film. Um, and so we invite everyone to come on up there. There is free parking under the Pendry Hotel, so you don't have to worry about taking the cabriolet up there. But if you go to parkcityfilm.org, you can get all the information on the different films that we have bring, coming in, what Pendry Plaza's um, offering as a sponsor for this event, and then of course, get some tickets to the, um, to the Miracle Club if you are so inclined, or you can just show up and buy tickets at the box office an hour before the posted showtime. Awesome. Well, it sounds like that's going to be a really great opportunity there at Pentry Plaza and not, or well, and the fact that like you can go out, enjoy the food on the patios, eat at one of those delicious restaurants and still enjoy the film is awesome. And it sounds like we've got the classic Princess Bride, one of my all time favorite movies and some just wonderful excitement there with the mountain biking. And then rounding it off with that Marcel the Shell, which is very much a new classic in my eyes. I love that movie. So as you guys are kind of rounding up your fall season, what are you guys looking forward to here? Oh, we've got some great films programmed, of course, coming up. Um, <clears throat> but one that we're really looking forward to and want to make sure everyone knows about is we're back with the Twilight Drive-In. Uh, we are headed to Deer Valley Resort this year, and we'll be in Snow Park parking lot four, so the lower half of Deer Valley Resort. And we are bringing in Matchstick Productions' new film, The Land of Giants, which is their newest ski film. So it'll be a fun night out under the stars. We're bringing in LED screens, so of course, like that exceptional sight and sound coming straight into your car stereo, and everyone's got these amazing speakers now in their car, so you can just crank it up to 11, bring a picnic, hang out with your friends, um, and just get ready for winter time. So that'll be on October 7th. Tickets are on sale now. Um, they will are limited to 125 cars, so get them now while they last, because they do sell out fast. But parkcityfilm.org to get all that information and uh, check out what great things we have coming up. Let me ask you about those tickets then. Or is that ticket one per car, or do you have to get four tickets if you've got a car full of friends? So it's one ticket per car. It's $40 for up to three people. If you have three or more people, we ask that you pay $50 because some people do bring in minivans and their big camper vans, and that's great and little pop-up things. But, um, you know, we don't want people to be hiding in the trunk as people used to do uh, in the old days of drive-ins where they you know, had to pay per person. Um, but we found that the per car rate works pretty well for folks. We usually average about two to three people per car. So, um, you know, premium price because it's a premium product, but a great way to, affordable way too, if you think about it with three people. Um, splitting that ticket price to come out and see a great movie. And, you know, again, we see people with all kinds of picnics. I mean, the, the picnicking that goes on at the drive-in movies is exceptional. Just they've set the bar quite high. Shark or tree platters. We've had little, like, s'mores pits. I mean, it's kind of second to none. So, you know, up your game there if you're coming out to the drive-in. Oh, and I got to say, that's one of the beauties of the drive-ins coming back. Like, it's just... That ability to bring your own food, bring your families, kind of enjoy a little bit of that more, I guess, sort of that compromise between the private movie screening at home, but the big theater experience with other people and a little bit more of that social environment too, which is just absolutely wonderful. And the fact that you guys have that LED screen is so great. The ability to be able to show without having to wait for it to get dark. Absolutely. And it's so bright. I mean, what's nice is you can adjust the brightness. So if you've ever been to a sporting event, as I'm sure most of your viewers have, um, like World Cup, 
Red Bull Rampage, that kind of thing. It's that type of a screen. So we can adjust it as it gets darker, the screen gets brighter to compensate. And so you get this like amazing, it's really hard to explain until you're there, but just kind of second to none viewing experience. It's so immersive as it draws you in and people, you know, sit in the back of their cars, pop the trunk, you know, get blankets. We've had people with huge bean bags in the back of their pickup trucks. I mean, it's, it's, you can make it super fun, super comfortable, cuddle up. It's a drive-in after all. Um, but yeah, different way to see a movie than we've uh, been experiencing pre-COVID. And certainly now, I don't think drive-ins are going anywhere. Once we've got that bug bite us again, um, I think people are pretty hooked. Exactly. Well, Katie Wang, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you so much for putting on such amazing programming throughout the community. Well, I can't wait to see you next Friday and talk a little bit more. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend. And we'll be right back with a short break after this. Welcome back to the show. A little bit earlier, Gretchen Pleshaw had the opportunity to talk to Steve Perlow, a travel expert who's got some tips and tricks on a fall vacation in Italy for us. Let's take a look. I'm very excited about this next guest, Steve Perillo, all the way from Italy. I'm so excited to talk about Italian tours and everything Italy. How are you doing? Buongiorno. Very good, Gretchen. Very good. <laughs> good. Well, I am stoked because Italy happens to be one of my favorite places in the world, and I want to hear all things Italy. It's a vibe. I love it. I went about four years, no, five years ago, and I heard that you are the person to ask all the different questions about Italy, too. I'd be happy to help out. This year is very, very, very busy because of the pandemic, uh, Gretchen. So the first thing I'm telling people is to, uh, is even next year is going to be busy. Go in the off season, go in November or March, even January. It's really much cheaper. The crowds are gone. Okay. And it's just easier all around. Uh, I really uh, would uh, try to do that. See, and I feel you because when I go visit somewhere, I want to feel like a local. I want to get the real vibe. I want to see what other people feel. Like. I don't need the crowds per se. I don't really want to feel like a tourist. <laughs> I want to feel like a local. So starting off, this is a pretty simplistic question, but when I'm very interested, what is your all-time favorite spot? And maybe not a destination that many go to in Italy. It would probably be uh, the big city of Naples. Uh, people don't yeah. go to Naples. It had a bad reputation in the 80s and 90s, but it's cleaned up. Really? But Naples is the Italian city of Italian cities, and it's everything Americans think of Italy, of a uh, Italian tomato sauce, uh, pizza, mozzarella, the talking with your hands. It's a Neapolitan. That's all uh, sing the songs, the Neapolitan song, the Pavarotti, all that music. It's all Naples, so if you go there, you get the real Italian life. It's not a touristy place. It's not an industrial place. It's just living Italian where you see the, uh, they still uh, hang their clothes out in, yeah. the, in the middle of the street. It's just, and the food is humble. And the people, they have this dark sense of humor because they have this Vesuvius, which has changed the psychology yeah. of these people. You know, it goes back to the ancient Greeks and the fear of this thing, and they make these dark jokes, and they're so funny, the Neapolitan. Anyway, that's one, uh, there's a million little places in Italy, but uh, besides the, the, the big cities, but. I love that you said that, because I've actually been to Naples, and I adored it. Naples and Rome were my two, top two favorite, and I speak with my hands all the time. I get um, <laughs> teased a lot, because here on Good Morning Vale, I'm always mo moving my hands and using my hands, so maybe I'm Italian a little bit. We'll see. I'll ask my mom. <laughs> I also was wondering the cuisine. You brought that up. The food is just to die for. I think I gained eight pounds when I was visiting. What, how can you best experience the Italian cuisine? What is the best way to go about it? Because the normal thing is, you, you know, you're at a famous place or you're at the Rialto Bridge in Venice or the Colosseum in Rome, and there are restaurants right there. Right. And they have English menus. They have pictures of the food. If they have pictures of the food, I wouldn't. I wouldn't eat there. Uh, <laughs> maybe in Tokyo they, they, they do that, but in Italy you shouldn't be. Uh, so you go down a side street, and there's just Italians in there, and you and you walk in, and and they are very, very, very helpful to people who are off the uh, tourist track, sort of, and they wander into a a real where just Italian people or a lunch or just, uh, business people are there. The food is so good, and the wine is so cheap, and it's so good, and it's just great great food and cheaper so go off the a uh, little off the uh, the main uh, tourist track 
That's what I was going to say. So you own, you're the president of this Italian touring company, Brilliant. And obviously you are taking people around. How is it that you best get to immerse yourself in Italian culture without feeling like a tourist? How is that? How do you do that? How do you have people have that experience? By moving into these places like Naples, uh, right. Gretchen, uh, you've got to go. You've got to see the Vatican Museum, or, or right. you've got to go to Venice. But you have to do these things. But these are uh, these are for tourists, and it's not where it's at, man. It's it's <laughs> it's the local people and the local food. That's where you learn about life. It's not yes. these tourist places. They're fine, but. So, you know, settling in or getting a villa in Tuscany, uh, could you imagine a week of that and getting a little rental car and everyone's so helpful. Right. Everyone speaks a little English. So it's, it's really, uh, Italy's a great destination, I got to tell you. Well, and I love that you said that too, because I'm a firm believer that's truth is if you want to experience a place, you have to experience and be a traveler, not a tourist. And there's two different vibes there and i think you know italy from everything i saw everyone was so brilliant and just kind and really wanting to help and not making you feel like oh silly american tourist haha you know just really wanting you to feel their culture and feel that vibe which is pretty awesome the same is true of america you could uh, spend a week in an american small town right but they're not uh, you know they're not two thousand year old villages you know with the history and the food and the vineyard you know it's it's different. It's cool. They have the history, man. They have the history. We're <laughs> so great, saying, but we don't have a history like that. I was going to say, so you're saying Vale isn't as cool. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Vale. <laughs> I know. Vale's vale one of the, is totally cool. Right? No, vale is one of the top places in the world. All right. So I'll give you, um, you can come to Vale. I'll give you the tour. It will be the Gretchen tour. And then I'll come to Italy and you can give me the tour. How about that? <laughs> okay, I'll take you to Matera, Matera, Italy, a little oh. town no one's ever heard of. Yeah, will you explain that to me? I'm interested. Explain that to Oh, me. yeah, it's a, made of a, one giant stone, limestone, and uh, it's 12,000 years old, the town. People oh, wow. moved into caves, and they lived in caves until 1952. And you can visit oh, wow. these, or you can stay in cave hotels, and they, it's so old-looking that they use it in the uh, Passion of the Christ movie. They use it in Ben-Hur. Oh, okay. Because it looks older than Jerusalem, and Jerusalem looks way old. But it, it's really, really, uh, there's um, uh, 99 other amazing villages like uh, Matata. And in Steve, Italy. that sounds so amazing. I'm like, I'd, oh, I want to travel so badly right now. <laughs> Steve, is this um, your travel agency? Is this something that you, like, was handed down? Past, did your dad do this? How did this come to be? Yeah, my uh, grandfather came from Naples and okay. he started the company in 1945. And then wow. my father took over and he took it mainstream into a big uh, tour operation. And then uh, I'm doing it now in the uh, electronic age. Uh, so we have a new challenges. My grandfather was the steamship, my father was the jet plane, and now I'm the internet, it looks like, <laughs> whatever that means. Well, Steve, I am definitely going to take you up on this. I'm so excited. I want to travel. I miss Italy. I'm, uh, you might be getting an email pretty soon. Steve at PerilloTours.com. Steve at PerilloTours.com. Thank you so much, Steve. We hope to talk to you again very, very soon. And thanks for getting up so early with us. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters.
the time we have for today's edition of Wasatch Weekends. Don't forget to catch us for our special one-hour Saturday edition where Tracy Miller is going to show us a delicious crockpot recipe, Bill Humbert's got some advice for starting our careers off right, and we've got a local author and an adorable adoptable pet of the week to stop by. So don't miss it. Until then, I'm Ben Roof and this is Wasatch Weekends. Thank you.